Good morning and welcome to the enclosure. Once again, it's been a long, uh, long time between updates. Uh, very sorry. Um, it's not a bit, it's not been a uh, very kind spring. So it's, uh, it's been, it's been quite of a struggle. Um, anyway, uh, I just thought I would give you a really quick update on where we're at. As you can see in the background, we have some uh, drywall. So at this point, the first floor has been boarded. Uh, they started the taping yesterday. I think we're about to start week three of, of the job. Um, I thought that was kind of crazy when they told me about it, but uh, there's a lot of work here. So uh, let me run through some of it. So the first floor is boarded. We've just started taping. They've done the, the seams. And uh, on Monday, they'll start the corner boards, and then they'll start loading uh, after that. On the board, uh, boarding process, one of the things that takes a long time is the reglet. And so the reglet is what is used to create shadow gaps. And basically, it's a little trough that is formed. So I'm going to have a, a natural fur casing, and let's just pretend this uh, piece of drywall is a piece of fur. It'll come out flush with the wall surface and just be a natural natural fur, three-quarter inch of stock. And it'll leave this trough uh, that will be painted, the, the, the trough will be painted the same color as the walls, and it'll just provide sort of a, an architectural feature that's called a shadow line. And it makes for a nice, clean um, way to finish off without using moldings and crown moldings and all that kind of stuff. Done the same thing at the bottom. And uh, basically, we've come up six inches off the floor. There will be a five and a, uh, there will be a half inch flooring go down. And then there will be a five inch um, floorboard which will either be uh, MDF, if we decide that we're going to have a painted same color as wall uh, baseboard, or it will be natural fur if that doesn't end up looking too busy. Um, and that'll then leave a half inch reveal, uh, shadow gap there as well. And then finally, we've done a shadow gap at the ceiling. And that is uh, five eighths instead of half inch because it's up tall and it needs a little bit uh, larger impact to have the same uh, look. And uh, that goes around uh, pretty much everywhere, as uh, you can see here. So lots of cutting. I think there was uh, a good three days or four days where I just sat at the saw and uh, they brought me. Uh, Reglet to cut, they would tell me what dimensions, and I think there's eight different profiles that I have to cut. So I've got a, an outside corner for, uh, for window door returns. Uh, I've got outside corners for um, the ceiling one, inside corners for the ceiling one. Uh, then we've got the, the baseboard, and you're not going to be able to see much of it because it's already been taped, but we've got inside and outside corners. Anyway, it's, uh, it's been fun. Uh, lots of mistakes the first day as we kind of got the system down pat. They started working on the LED troughs yesterday and uh, got really lovely straight lines. They had also done this side and on, on two of the sides of the square. And I actually had to rip it off because uh, it's hard to see, but basically there is going to be an LED tape placed on this side. And, and that's actually an overhang by about two inches, two and a half inches. And then there's a little gap between that and uh, the top piece. And the idea was just to provide a little bit of an upstand. And the problem was that the product we used was too much of an upstand. And it completely blocked off that space. So on Monday, they're going to bring some 5 8 uh, L trim. Uh, drywall is half inch. That'll mean that we have a 1 8 upstand, which will be more than enough to hide the LED tape. 
And then, quite frankly, we could probably just use J trim because the overhang is uh, uh, is deep enough that we could hide the LED tape without any upstand. But uh, um, the contractor wants to use uh, L trim, so that's what we'll use. So, uh, just a quick uh, run through and show you where we're where we're at on everything. Uh, the, the ceiling uh, took them. Uh, they figured about three times the normal time. So if you remember from past videos, there's a lot of hot water um, space conditioning pipes up there on a six inch uh, uh, spacing. And the requirements for the system are that we screw it uh, between every row of pipe, every 12 inches down the row. So there's basically a six by 12 pattern whenever there is heating pipes or cooling pipes in the ceiling. The areas where you see that pattern change, like uh, over here, this is areas where there was no uh, heating pipes and they could just do a more traditional uh, uh, screwing pattern. But uh, a lot of work. These are uh, two, I believe they were two and a half inch screws. Uh, so th they're also harder to put in because they can't use their traditional um, uh, screw gun that has the the screws all fastened to a plastic strip, collated, I guess it's called. Uh, they have to use manual screws and, and push them up, but they did a great job. Now, one thing that does help them is that they're not responsible for putting in any of the pot light holes. I'll be doing that later with a uh, very precise uh, hole saw and my uh, tacks on the floor and an and a LED uh, or a, a laser uh, pointer that will precisely locate where the whole center is. Uh, this will be the office uh, with its own uh, entry from outside, which is kind of nice. And uh, in the background, you'll possibly hear the woodpecker going at it. Um, it's been an interesting uh, Spring, he's been the, the pair of there's basically there's a, uh, a birdhouse right in behind here. Um, the pair started here, then they gave up and went to another birdhouse, and now suddenly they've come back here again. Uh, as of yet, there's still no eggs. But uh, the pocket doors basically, I just have these fake OSB casings just to provide them something to place the uh, the regulate up against. And then later on, those will disappear in proper fur ones. I'll go in solid, solid on the uh, opening side and the top, and then split casings where the pocket is here. So uh, that's really about it. Uh, I'll just do a very quick run through of the rooms. So we're coming into the kitchen and uh, the uh, kitchen island. So it's now much better to find room spaces. We can we can tell uh, how how large areas are going to feel. So we're quite happy with uh, all of this. Uh, you all remember from past videos that's my LED station. So that's a transformer uh, station. And then we've got our living room. And our dining room, our guest entrance, guest entrance closet to the left, and my office to the right. And then we've got the hallway down. Uh, the little bulkhead here was for uh, a large uh, HRV duct. Uh, but this, I think, forms a nice little uh, feature. Uh, speaking of features, we have our art wall here. So there will be a a glass plate placed here with lights below. The glass plate will be right tight with the reglet and project out to the face of the drywall. And so even the edge of the glass plate will glow uh, when it's lit up. Then we can put some, some uh, sculptures or something in there. Uh, we've got the mud, the, the family entrance off the garage. And then a, uh, it's going to be pretty dark in here, but uh, uh, a full bath. So, uh, yeah, we can get a little bit of light here. So there is room for a tub across here, but for now we're going to have a manufactured 36-inch uh, shower.
stall here, and then just some uh, cabinets here. Hanging bathtub, or sorry, hanging toilet. So for the hanging toilets, you always want to put a um, MDF or similar backing uh, to provide a crush resistance so that the toilet doesn't crush the drywall and tilt down. And then uh, a vanity I'll go here with the sink. Uh, then we go into the mudroom. And the mudroom is not going to be completed at this time. It'll be completed after, after possession. Uh, mainly because I still have a lot of HVAC to do here. I've got the HRV to put in and the ceiling uh, heating cooling system. Downstairs, uh, we haven't done too much. This is, uh, this is the stairs leading to the basement. This is where the building science lab will be installed. And so we've got that uh, framed out. And uh, we've got the HRV uh, air intake condensing coil that will provide some dehumidification uh, for the incoming air. So again, this area will be left open until after possession, just to allow us to get in faster. All of the basement is being left undone, except for where the laundry area is. I, I had them quickly board that up. And so that's what, uh, that's what this area is. Uh, the stacking laundry machines over there will have a uh, heat pump uh, um, dryer uh, so it doesn't need any external venting. And just a little bulkhead for the HRV. Got very few bulkheads in the house and generally where they make some sense, uh, where they, they provide even an architectural feature. So it was planned that way at the drawing stage. One of the uh, the Space conditioning uh, hydronic manifolds. And then this will be where we've put, um, it was originally designed for a, um, a drying closet, but uh, we're going to not worry about that. And I think what we're going to instead do is put an LG styler in here, which is basically one of those um, manufactured drying stations where like pant pressing or clothes uh, steaming for renewing and that kind of thing. So that's what's been done in the basement. There's the other main hydronic um, uh, distribution uh, manifold where all of the, the remote manifolds are fed from and then the, the main HVAC equipment will be under these stairs and uh, attached to that. So that's the main floor and the basement. And we'll just do a quick uh, run through of the stairs. The stairs, I wanted a, a reglet uh, to go along the same slope as the stairs. And then we'll have every, I think it's every third step, we'll have a light shining towards the wall, an LED step light. And then this wire coming out of the wall will also be for an LED strip that goes on the underside of the handrail. So it's going to be a nice effect all, all in all. On the right hand side, we've got MDF that's been left long and it's been purposely left so that it's one inch above the finished surface. Once the half inch flooring goes in, then we're going to use a router and just round over that edge to create a nice uh, clean look. We did not like the idea of seeing the, the other way of doing it is to use veneer edge banding on the edge of the, the step profiles. And then you end up with this, this sort of zigzag um, flooring look, flooring color um, zigzag strip along the edge. And it kind of looks uh, busy as far as we're concerned. This will look a lot more uh, clean and modern. Another reglet that continues the, the flooring reglet. We did this in both stairways and just continues straight across the opening to the other side. And so up here, uh, again, we're going to leave part of the place undone until after we move in. But what we are finishing is the, uh, the hallway, uh, the upper landing, the, the uh, vaulted ceiling in the hallway, which you can see has already been finished off here while the scaffolding was in place. 
I'm looking back towards the uh, the hallway. Master bedroom is on the right. Spare bedroom straight across, and there's a family bathroom to the left. And then straight through here is, is another bedroom. We're going to be using it as the media room. That is going to be left unfinished, and I'll show you that in a sec. And then straight here is a guest room. Uh, that will be our initial bedroom. And it's been set up so that we'll have a nice uh, glass window insert here uh, to let a lot of natural light in from the clerestory behind me. And so this has all been boarded and uh, is ready to tape. Uh, it's closets. Again, I'll show you what the, that that brings a heck of a lot of light in, especially uh, in the spring mornings when the sun is low in the sky. That just streams in here, which is quite lovely. And our view out through the windows. Media room. We're going to leave uh, just boarded walls. I won't even have them tape them until I have finished the ceiling hydronic system and we can uh, board the ceilings. Uh, so that's basically where we're at now. This room's basically done other than they need to reattach something that they popped off from the other side. And I need to do some bulkheads um, up top there, if I can show that to you. Yeah, I think you can see that. I need to do some bulkheads around the uh, HRV. That's the main six inch takeoff for the master bathroom. And I'll do that once I've uh, put in the hydronic uh, heating system. The wire's hanging down there for speakers. That's the surround sound, Atmos uh, surround sound system, the media room. And then this uh, little alcove will be a floor to ceiling um, pull out uh, cabinet, uh, shelving cabinet on, uh, on long extension uh, slides heavy-duty long extension slides. Uh, so that will be uh, a nice, nice feature. We can put a uh, DVD library, uh, CD library, uh, actual book library, and then the upper upper um, shelves we could use for storage like Christmas stuff and that kind of thing. Upper wall, we've got our uh, smoke detector, and then the next to it is a 24-volt LED um, con um, junction box, and that'll be for an LED track I'll put along here. Uh, similar to the LED track down in the kitchen or the living room, and that'll be for shining light up against the ceiling up there. Okay, the last little few areas to do got the uh, family bathroom, that'll be what we use for now. And I've got the uh, hydro block uh, wallboard on for the wet areas. Great product, I think. Um, super, super light, easy to install. It's not like a cement board. And it's much, much, much better than any type of um, moisture resistant drywall, which really doesn't belong in a wet zone, no matter what the claims are. Uh, so this this is an alternative to concrete board, and I think it's a great alternative. It's sealed with uh, basically a, almost like a, a silicone, uh, and then you can put your uh, Dietrich over top of that. And so this will just be a toilet and a vanity on this side, and there's the tub installed on this side with a shower door. The other spare bedroom... Uh, which I'm currently using as an office and a clean room. It's ready to go for paint. And this will just be, this will actually probably stay as an office until I have the first floor office set up and complete. Uh, but this is currently an unclaimed bedroom that I'm sure my wife will decide she wants to do something with, maybe for her office, separate from mine. Okay? So, Basically, the, the guest room, the hallway, the family bath, and this spare bedroom are all that will be completed at this time. The media room will be left, and then the master suite's going to be left. Again, because I haven't done the heating system. I'm prioritizing my time on what needs to be done to get us in. So they just started boarding this uh, yesterday? Yeah, I believe yesterday they started boarding it. 
and they've got quite a ways, uh, quite quite a bit done. Uh, not too far to go. They've left four inches at the top, which is my calculation for how far the ceiling is going to drop after I have done my heating system and allowing the three quarter inch gap to put in the reglet. We are going to do ceiling reglet in this room, uh, being the master bedroom. Uh, but uh, basically they've got all the walls except for the east side done. And they've done a lot of the master bathroom. Uh, they've started, they've got the actual uh, toilet room started. Again, we've got the OSB, or sorry, uh, MDF uh, backer for the hanging toilet. Using hydro block for the west wet areas, and then they're going to fill in the top past the splash zone with just normal drywall. I'm going to leave this wall until I have managed to uh, finish the niche for the built-in TV, and then we've got our our shower. Uh, I'm leaving this until after we move in, uh, and basically I've decided to put in. Um, hydronic lines in the walls here too. It'll uh, provide for nice warm walls in the winter time so you're not stepping into a, a cold shower. Not that there really would ever be cold walls in this house but they're just going to end up drywalling from this point up. And they've done, uh, they've done most of that. They were about to fill in that but the uh, the HRV vent sticks in too far or sticks out too far so I'm gonna have to fix that at one point. All right so that's that's about it. The only other room left is the uh, walk-in closet which is being used as a marshalling yard and I'm still gonna have to hook up some circuits to the hydronic system so they're gonna probably just complete this uh, outside wall and I know it's not showing up against the, the backlit sun but uh, this will be completed at a, at a later time as well. Thanks for visiting, and uh, forgive me for not updating uh, as often. Um, to be honest, I've just been way too tired, and uh, I've been working, on average, I've been working 80 to 90 hour weeks, and uh, it's just been a bit, uh, a bit much. Uh, early morning uh, starts with these guys, 7.30, and then I'm typically here till 7. Um, I've also had a recent stint where uh, I guess one of my cuts or, or injuries on the job site ended up causing a tissue infection on my right leg, sorry, left leg, and I've been in uh, various emergency rooms, uh, urgent care centers, I go for ultrasound on Sunday, um, on two different antibiotics to uh, control the infection. It got kind of scary for a while and hurt like hell for a few days until the antibiotics kicked in. Uh, but we're on the mend and uh, I'm glad that that's over. But it's just been, like I said, it's been a pretty crappy spring and I'm looking forward to getting it uh, behind us. Thanks for visiting, and we'll see you again soon.